The rest is not silence, but belongs to me. You chose the easier part, an elegant thrust. But what is heroic death compared with eternal watching? With a cold apple in one's hand on a narrow chair, with a view of the antil and the clock's dial. Adieu, Prince. I have tasks, a sewer project, and a decree on prostitutes and beggars. I must also elaborate a better system of prisons. Since, as you justly said, Denmark is a prison. I go to my affairs. This night is born a star named Hamlet. We shall never meet. What I shall leave will not be worth a tragedy. It is not for us to greet each other or bid farewell. We live on archipelagos. And that water, these words, what can they do? What can they do, Prince? I can't figure out what happens to me when you say something like this. I feel I am being torn into two halves. Why, Shama? In fact, since last year, for the first time, I felt that I'm looking at the world with such clarity. There is some relation between what I'm thinking and doing. I can't. My thinking, you, politics, such a mess. You are making a mess of it, Shama, by not thinking clearly about it. No, thinking doesn't help. It's not that one can't see, but one sees all sides and can't choose. There are no all sides. There is one side, but one side. Sometimes I feel. All that you say is just pure words. I don't pay attention to your words. I feel like putting my ear against your chest and listen to your breathing, to your silence. I don't know whether I'm unhappy because I'm free or I'm free because I'm unhappy. It's pure romantic nonsense. Freedom is the recognition of necessity. Can't we ever talk without quoting someone? I feel everything has lost its virginity, even experience. You sit here and watch the sun setting and some lines come to you, some notes come to you. It's horrible. That's why I want to sing. When I sing, I feel I'm alive. I'm creating. I feel the labor pains. But think of the priorities. Do you think you can afford to spend time on something as futile as Indian classical music? Maybe it is beautiful at times, but it's so distant, so esoteric, so irrelevant. For whom, Ravi? I don't have to tell you that. That's why, Ravi, I tell you. You don't understand it. Do you remember the earthquake of Koina? I just finished my schooling. My Tanpura was in the stand near my bed. When at night I woke up and realized what was happening. I clung to my Tanpura desperately. Dad came running to see what was happening. I stood there trembling with my Tanpura. Forget it, Ravi. We always quarrel about it. This had that coming poem to me. Come, I leave it. I was a different person then. Were you? How sure do you sound about everything? Just a few lines, Ravi. Whatever you remember. Please. Or if your wish be to close me, I and my life will shut very beautifully. Suddenly, as when the heart of this flower imagines, the snow everywhere carefully descending. I do not know what it is about you that closes and opens. Only something in me understands. The voice of your eyes is deeper than all roses. Nobody, not even the rain has such small hands. Yes, boy. Yes, boy. 
Uh, not quite. I believe very few students turned up. Oh boy, was it a fast. Listen to the whole story. I told the cops about 2,000 students would come. We had printed 2,000 leaflets, distributed them practically in every college. I nearly lost my voice trying to explain it to all those morons. And you know what one of them said? You tell them, Bobby. I could have killed him. Then Charlie said, if they raise the fees by 50 percent, my parents can afford it. Why are you worried? So I said, what about those who can't afford it? What will they do? Then that idiot said, they shouldn't go to college. And then Shekhar was about to pounce on him when I took him away. I clean forgot I was trying to persuade him. I felt like saying, you filthy with salafab. But you know my voice was so hoarse that no words came out. You know, it was one of the funniest sights in my life. It was a fantastic sight. Shaker standing there, his arms going like blades of a windmill, sputtering and furious, and you felt he would be shouting. But no sound came out from him. You know, it was one of the funniest sights in my life. I pulled Shekhar aside, took him to the canteen, and I was just laughing while Shekhar was so furious. What was so funny? Come on, you always come at the end of a story. No, I heard it from Shekhar. I think this is no laughing matter. It was the right thing to pull Shekhar away. But it wasn't the right thing to laugh at him. Oh, for heaven's sake, can't someone laugh at something funny? Once you start laughing at things like this, you lose your seriousness. You let the steam off with your laughter and you're through. Remember what Codwell said about Bernard Shaw? Shaw finally became the entertainer of the bourgeoisie. A mere clown. But Vikram... I think this is a serious matter. You should apologize to Shekhar. Well, if that's the way you feel about it, Shekhar, I'm sorry. Uh, not that way, Bobby. Enough. Let's proceed with the work. So a revolutionary laughs only once, when he hears the last laugh. There are times, Bobby, when even you talk sense. I'll tell you about our strike. There was a lottery charge at the works today. They made up their minds to press the strike. They might put us behind bars. And now the question is, what happens next? Vikram, when we join the study circle, we made certain things very clear. None of us would be in a position to leave the college and become full-time workers. Not that I'm backing out. What about Shama? She's a lecturer now. Or maybe she can't miss her music lessons. Yes, Shama? Vikram, I had always done the work which I've taken upon myself, or which was allotted to me. In spite of that, I've heard repeated remarks about my music. Just as... Shama, I beg your pardon. I don't think you answered my question. The answer is no. In that case, I'll take the responsibility of carrying forward this work. And your exams? You know my answer. But Ravi, I'm not a child. I know what I'm doing. My exams can wait. Oh, <laughs> 
You know what Lenin said about Mozart? That's exactly how I feel now. I know. It was in the strike. It should soon be over. No exams that made me anxious. It was you. Your sudden hardness. Yes, Shama. I see that now. They say about the blue Danube that only those who are in love see the color of the water as blue. But the water of the Danube is blue. So, everyone is in love. I wish Shama the world were like that. Maybe our grandchildren will be more fortunate. Just a moment. Walked out of the negotiations. They were arrested. How could you be so obstinate? What is it? Are you trying to be practical about it? You know me better than that, Ravi. What's holding you back, Shama? There's a fable about a man who decides to kill a monster. After spending a lifetime hunting him down, he finally kills him. There's a lake nearby. He goes there to wash his sword. He looks at his own reflection and is startled. He has turned into the monster he had hated so much. You know that one does not have any choice. You've got to be ruthless. It's a war against wars, a hatred of hate. Here and now, you and me must fight against what we've got to face. You can't cite examples and go back to your establishment. That's treachery. I know it, Ravi. But when I think of the future, I think of a gigantic show which is about to squash me and all individuals with me. But when I sit with my Tanpura, I feel a strange force inside my loins. It's a beautiful warm white flame that shoots up. I feel it when I look at you. I feel I'm like the earth and I'll be green again even after a holocaust. I'll give up music, Ravi, but under protest. I'll be with you. Please, Ravi. <laughs> <laughs> 